Hey everybody, Red X Rain here. Uh, welcome to uh, another episode of Let's Play Every Star Wars Game Ever. And here we are playing simply Star Wars uh, for the Famicom or Family Computer uh, from 1987. Um, so the uh, I think this is as as far as I can remember. I think this is the first Star Wars video game to actually have the like original scroll uh, here from the. Um, from, from the film itself. And also, you'll notice here there's an extra copyright date there. Um, translation in 2005. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that uh, in a little second when I get into the actual uh, history of the game. Uh, but I just want to kind of sit back and just sort of enjoy the opening visual here. It's pretty good. Again, staying very true to the film, you know, it's looking, looking pretty good. And now here we have the computer just sort of playing around there, that's just, a uh, demonstration mode. So, okay, so, right off the bat we have two options, we have Novice and we have Pro Mission, so basically normal and hard. Uh, I'm gonna go with Novice. Uh, this game is difficult enough, I can't even imagine how difficult it is on Pro. Of course, one of the most quotable lines from the movie there. <laughs> uh, not quite. Alright, so here we are on Tatooine. Um, so, uh, I, I just, I think I really wanted to sit back and I wanted to, oh, well, okay, let's, let's go over some mechanics here first of all. So, pretty basic platformer stuff. Um, we have an attack button, Luke attacks with his lightsaber, and he also can jump, move left and right. Now you'll notice that uh, these enemies are dropping these little uh, sort of crystals. I'm going to let that bird go, I'm not very good at getting the uh, flying enemies. You see, they're dropping these crystals, so those are called, uh, at least I call them force points. They might have a more official name that I'm just not, whoops, there we go, that I'm just not uh, aware of. Um, but basically, the more of them we collect, the more Luke can use these different powers. So this allows him to move and jump really fast and far. Uh, that stops enemies for like 10 seconds. That will turn our lightsaber into a blaster for, I don't know, 30 seconds. Um, I'm trying to remember what that one does. I think that kills everything on screen. And uh, the more four force points we have, the more, um, I guess, abilities we unlock. Uh, and those will come into play um, quite a bit later. They become uh, very much uh, sort of essential later. And you'll see there's very small um, crystals. I think those are worth one, and the, these bigger ones are worth like five or something like that. Um, some a lot of the a lot of this game is built on patience. There we go. Uh, so it's kind of uh, usually the I think the the best route is to just and I'm just going for this one up here is to uh, generally let the enemies come to you, don't chase them down. Um, because one thing you might notice is that there is no health bar. Um, and that is one of the things that makes this game so very difficult, is that it's uh, one hit and you're dead, and you get three lives. I mean, there's a couple one-ups throughout the game, and there's actually kind of a cheat you can do to get continues, but we'll get there when we get there. So already, here we are fighting uh, Darth Vader. I'm sorry, Sasori Vader. And so this is feeling very different from the film so far, right? Like, fighting Darth Vader in a sand crawler? Well, things just got a whole lot weirder as Vader turns into a giant scorpion. Remember that part from the movie? It's my favorite part of the movie. Um, <laughs> and uh, Vader usually drops this huge uh, force gem, and, and you can see we're unlocking more abilities. Um, let's free R2, and I guess we can free the Jawas too. That wasn't so bad. Not not a terribly impossible level. Oh, this is fun, actually, too. We get to um, pilot a speeder. And actually, while we're in this, we're invincible. We can... Well, mostly invincible. We can drive through enemies, but we just can't run into, like, rocks and stuff. The good thing is, is that when you're in the speeder levels like this, even if you do hit something like a wall or a rock, it just, like, takes you out of the speeder, and you can continue the level um, on foot. But, you know, with the invincibility, basically, of... Uh, the speeder, why would you not want to keep it? 
I've being held on Kess. Yes, the translators did a good job, but there's a, a few typos in this uh, in this version. So uh, here we have a different type of level. Now we're flying the Millennium Falcon, as you can see, and um, you know it's 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 pretty fun. Um, just shooting them down. Uh, you'll see they shoot these. Oh wow, that was really fast. So they shoot those uh, sort of like green lasers and. Um, you can either like move left or right to get it off screen, and then oh the oh Kessel the mountain planet we must have made that in less than twelve parsecs. Um, so uh, so yeah, when you're flying the Millennium Falcon, it's just gotta shoot the ties down. Um, when they shoot those green lasers, you either gotta move left or right to get it off screen, or uh, you can press B and it puts up like a shield for a couple seconds, and then that blocks it. But you only get like three shields, so you have to be uh, careful with that. Oh, I thought I was going to die there, because... Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I just feel like there's so much to cover in this game. So, um, as you're noticing already... Oh, and there's a, a blaster. I'm definitely going to go ahead and grab that. It will permanently... Well, until we die. Because I will die, believe me, I will. <laughs> I have a, have a blaster here. And that, it's really helpful on a lot of levels, um, to have the blaster. Although, actually, sometimes... Although it might not seem like it, uh, the lightsaber is sometimes a better option in some levels and some uh, enemies and stuff. But again, as you're noticing... Oh, and there we go. I'm dead. Alright. Well, that was a stupid way to go, too. So, yeah, you're... Uh, as I've been kind of uh, hinting at here a little bit, um, this game takes some uh, takes some liberties with the, uh, with the storyline a little bit, right? Uh, I mean, it started off kind of okay, you know, Luke's on, um, Tatooine and everything, but I mean, you know, he already knows how to use, I mean, here's the small stuff, right? <laughs> he already knows how to use a lightsaber, but he hasn't met Obi-Wan, because now we're going to rescue him from this planet right now. Um, uh, let's see, um, uh, Luke, uh, Luke pilots the Millennium Falcon, uh, Han Solo doesn't come into play until almost actually the very end of the game so there's that oh my god ah yeah uh so i mean that's kind of like the least of our worries the fact that darth vader i'm sorry sansori vader which maybe that means something in japanese and i'm just i don't i don't speak japanese um yeah. um uh yeah the fact that darth vader turns into a scorpion um and we'll see I think I'm going to use my invincibility here real quick, just because there's, like, a lot of enemies and, like, these lasers and stuff, so that's another one of the force powers, obviously. It's, like, 20 seconds of invincibility. <laughs> See, here's an example of I just want to wait for this guy to come to me. There we go. But, yeah, we'll see, uh, quote-unquote Darth Vader uh, show up at the end of every level. Um... We always have to battle him at the end of every, like, planet or stage or whatever. Um, but he'll turn into different things. It's kind of a tricky jump there. Uh, and, uh, there's, uh, there's something about, I think in the instruction manual, it says, Are you serious? God. Um, the instruction manual says something to the effect of how... Uh, when you when 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 Luke confronts Vader in these different stages, that it's uh, supposed to be reminiscent of how is it in? Um, I think it's in Empire, right? Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Oh, it definitely is. Wait, no, because man, why can't I remember this? When Luke goes into the tree, uh, he's with he's with Yoda on on the and, and he's doing his training, right? And and Vader kind of shows up, but then Luke, like, cuts off Vader's head, right? And, uh, uh, it reveals his face. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do some grinding here real quick. I'll finish my story in a second. Okay, so that should be enough. Okay, I wanted to grind so I have almost... Because the maximum you can have is, uh, 99 force points. Um, but like I was saying before, yeah, so, like, the whole Vader transforming... Uh, this is, by the way, super useful right here. You, you've seen the invincibility. Uh, we have these wings, uh, which is going to make us, uh, help us to levitate. Uh, and that's super useful. As you can see, I can just hold B and just float. 
and that's super useful in a lot of situations. I should have just gone for the ladder, I don't know why I didn't. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the explanation that the instruction manual gives, is that these are sort of like projections of Darth Vader, but not actually Darth Vader himself, and so he's able to turn into these different um, forms. And so we'll see that again here, as we of course fight in a Egyptian pyramid. Lord Geos Vader. Again, I'm not sure if that's just a direct, like, phonetic translation from Japanese. If that means something, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but now, you see, he turns into uh, Ridley from the Metroid series, so that's pretty cool. I think it looks like him. Okay. And so I'm on my last life here. The good thing about fighting these uh, Vader forms is that um, even when you die, it remembers how many times you hit the before you died. So I really only need to hit him one more time to get him. And some of the fights are so hard um, that um, that that's almost necessary. I mean, I guess if I I mean, believe me, I practiced the hell out of this game. This game is hard, okay? <laughs> really freaking hard. Especially with, like, there's no password screens. I mean, you know, NES games, well, okay, this is the Famicom, but, uh, you know, uh, didn't, didn't have, like, you know, you couldn't save or anything like that. Um, okay, I got 99, alright. So I actually don't want to go down that ladder, I was just trying to grind to get some, uh, uh force points here. Um, because here's our first, I guess, it's, I guess you can kind of say it's like a puzzle, kind of, sort of? Of course, if I still had my blaster, this wouldn't be a problem. But, oh well. Let's clear everything out just to make sure. Switch over to the hovering. Levitate. And there we go. Maybe there's a way to do this without levitate with, like, very, very tricky jumps. I don't know. There's a lot of very tricky jumps in this game. Everyone always talks about how, and it's, I mean, it's absolutely true, how difficult the jumps in um, Ninja Gaiden are, the, like, original arcade one. Um, this game gives that game a run for its money, I think, in terms of impossible jumps that you need to be, like, just, you need to nail them perfectly. And, it, and like Ninja Gaiden, very few lives, no, like, continues or anything. Right. So we got another speeder level. Um, so I had mentioned I wanted to talk about oops, but I wanted to talk about the, the history of this game because it's well, I mean, I, to be fair, I don't know a ton about the history, but here's the thing. Um, so I'm playing this on a Famicom emulator, and if you're not familiar with what Famicom is, Famicom um, was basically what the NES was, <clears throat> excuse me, the NES was in Japan, uh, they didn't call it the Nintendo Enter Entertainment System or NES, they called it the Famicom, and then it came to the States, I don't know, I, I actually don't know off the top of my head, but a couple years later. Um, it sort of looks the same, you can look up pictures of it if you want, um, you know, it has the same sort of graphic style, I suppose, and everything, um, but this game was never released uh, in the United States. Um, it came out um, as the title screen had shown us, uh, in 1987, and, uh, most people didn't really, and there's, there's 3PO. Where are you being held? Escalon. Okay, great. Um, these are fun. I do like these, uh, these Millennium Falcon levels. They're pretty fun. No different here. We just have more, uh, more ties to fight. And I think they get a little faster and... A little bit more clever with their laser fire. I usually don't like to do the shields thing. I'd rather just, like, constantly drift out of the way. There we go. That wasn't too bad. But, uh, yeah, this game was never really seen uh, stateside until sort of, like, the age of emulation really, like, came into play. Um, and, uh, and by the way, as you can see, I'm not... Uh, this, this game is really hard. <laughs> I'm already having a very hard time, and I'm, I'm down to, like, my last life. 
So I'm not above using save states. So I'm not gonna use it like obnoxiously, you know, like after, like before every jump or like every like, you know, two seconds, but I am gonna use save states from here on out because I'm running low on lives and um, I'm getting to a point now where restarting would be like ridiculous. And of course the game's just about is just gonna get harder anyway. By the way, Luke, sw Luke swims really good for being from a desert planet, doesn't he? Man, he's, he's, he's good. Um, I feel like, ironically enough, usually water levels, uh, especially in old games like this, tend to be, like, the worst. I think this is one of the easiest levels in the whole game, um, quite frankly. Frankly. And I think there's, like, a semi-hidden one up over here. I just gotta get to this little cave. Um, but yeah, so we never really saw this in the States, this game. Uh, there we go. Um, why that is, I'm not 100% sure. Um, I have two guesses. One is that, uh, there's sort of a, kind of a, I guess like, like you could sort of say like a brief history, uh, several examples, I think, of, uh, games that were made for like the NES or Famicom, if you want to be, you know all up in arms about it, where um, uh, games that were considered too difficult wouldn't be released in America. Uh, I think the most notable example of that was uh, in Japan, um, there was Super Mario Bros. 2, the sequel to the original Super Mario Bros., the game that we've all played, you know, a million times, right? Um, and, uh, in Japan, Super Mario World, or Super Mario Brothers, excuse me, I think I said World before, Super Mario Brothers 2, and I'm gonna use the, the time stop here real quick, because there's, like, a really narrow passage with these squids, and they'll all just bump into you, so. I'll let this guy pass here. Um, yeah, if games were, yeah, too difficult, like, Super Mario Brothers 2 in Japan, uh, looks a lot like Super Mario Brothers 1, it's just the levels are really ridiculously hard, and then there's, like, a whole story about how, you know, the, the Super Mario Brothers 2 that uh, American audiences got was, uh, like, a reskinned version of, like, a different game called Doki Doki Panic. But, I mean, this is getting <laughs> way outside of what I'm doing here. I don't know why I can't just get this stupid anglerfish. I didn't get him with this. There we go. Probably wasn't worth it. Probably could have just swam low. But there's two, so whatever. Uh, okay, let's go fight another Vader and see what he turns into this time. Oh, it should also be noted that even when you have the laser blaster, uh, once you fight, uh, when you're fighting Vader, uh, that, that usually doesn't work. I'm actually surprised that it worked on this stage. This is actually a really easy fight. Uh, just stay really, really low. He can't get you on the bottom. And then just kind of follow after him, and I'm just trying to hit his tail, basically. One shot to the tail, and he's uh, he's done. Uh, but yeah, many many thanks to the the translators of this game. Ah, oh, shoot. Because otherwise, this would all be in Japanese, and we would miss out on a uh, you know all this very important uh, storytelling here, right? And, and and again, they they generally did a pretty good job. Also, the Millennium Falcon can uh, fly underwater. I don't know if you guys know that. Little problem with syntax there and, and uh, everything. That's okay. Not gonna shame. Not gonna shame the translators. English is hard. All right, more ties. And, uh, generally my strategy, once I get this far, I use the shields there, um, this far into things, I, I, I kind of just sort of pick a direction and I go with it, and I sort of just wait for the ties to kind of fly into the, the crosshair. Because, again, it's not the crosshair that's moving, you can probably tell that. Uh, it's, it stays locked in the center. Come on, just one more. And that was all my shields. Woo! All right. Well, I'm feeling pretty good about this. This seems like a pretty good stopping point here at the uh, the Death Star. 
Um, so I'm going to leave it off here. Yes, this is the first video where I'm going to have to split this game into multiple sections. Because it does, this is really the first game that we have where it's like a clear starting endpoint, like a whole sort of plot thing. So uh, again, I'm going to stop here for now. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Please like, please comment, please subscribe. I do always appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time as we explore the Death Star. Until then, may the Force be with you.